In this video, we're going to be discussing universal joints or universal couplings. And in particular, we're going to be looking at how they can be used to ensure that the input speed and the output speed of a shaft is constant, even when the input and output don't share the same axis of rotation. So let's begin with the example we have on the page here. And this is a screenshot taken from a video from the Engine On YouTube channel. If you haven't already seen this video, then I would suggest watching it because it provides a suitable animation for this type of joint and how they can be used. So the first thing we need to consider is what we mean by constant velocity for our input and output shafts. So on the left hand side we have our input shaft. And our input shaft is going to be rotating. Now we're going to assume that our input shaft already has constant velocity. But what we want to ensure is that our output shaft also has constant velocity. Even though the axis of rotation for our input and output shafts are not the same. So we have our input shaft here and its axis of rotation. We have our output shaft here and its axis of rotation. And it should be clear that these two axes are not aligned. They're not sharing the same axis of rotation. So we have two universal couplings and in between we have something called a propeller shaft, also known as a prop shaft. So here we have our propeller shaft. And the difference in angle between our input and our propeller shaft is known as the articulation angle. So let's add this to our diagram. We have an angle here, which is the difference between the axis of rotation for the input and the prop shaft, and that's our articulation angle. So we have a number of things to consider here. First of all, when our input shaft rotates with constant velocity, does our prop shaft also rotate with constant velocity? Now the simple answer to this question is that the prop shaft isn't going to rotate with constant velocity. What's a little more difficult is to understand the reasons why. Now what I want you to imagine is that you're looking at this drive shaft from this position here, so end on. Now the input shaft is going to be represented by a circle. If we looked at the input shaft, we would see a circle. And we've already said that that's rotating with constant velocity or constant angular velocity. Therefore, the time taken to move from a position of zero degrees to a position of 45 degrees for the input shaft is going to be exactly the same as the time taken to move from 45 degrees to 90 degrees because the angular speed is constant. Now, if we were to imagine looking at the prop shaft, then we wouldn't see a circular shaft. Because the shaft's angled downwards, what we would actually see is an ellipse. And I'm going to exaggerate this slightly. So what we would see for the prop shaft is an ellipse. The greater the articulation angle, the narrower that ellipse would appear. Now hopefully by drawing that sketch it should be evident that the angular velocity as we move from 0 to 45 degrees is going to be different from the angular velocity moving from 45 degrees to 90 degrees. The reason being is because the distance travelled here is different to the distance travelled here. Therefore the angular velocity moving from 0 to 45 degrees is going to be different to the angular velocity moving from 45 to 90 degrees. Let's just add these two pieces of information to a quick sketch of a graph. So if we can imagine, we have our angular velocity on the y-axis, and on the x-axis, we're going to have our angular position. Well, as we've just stated, the angular velocity of the input shaft is going to be constant. But the angular velocity of the prop shaft is going to fluctuate. It's going to speed up, so that's going to be moving faster than the input. Then it's going to slow down, speed up and slow down like so. So that represents 
our prop shaft. The reason the angular velocity speeds up and slows down is because it's following an elliptical path rather than a circular path. So what does all this mean for the output shaft? Well, if we were to look at the output shaft, what we would see, once again, is a circle. But there are some conditions on this. We would only see a circle if our input shaft and our output shaft were parallel. Now, the way that we show that they're parallel is by adding two parallel lines onto the input shaft and by adding two parallel lines on the output shaft, like so. That tells us that the input and the output are parallel. So providing the input and the output are parallel, and we're looking down onto that axis, then we would see a circle. The other condition is that our two universal joints are arranged symmetrically. So we have a universal joint here, and we have a universal joint here. We need to ensure that they're arranged symmetrically in order to ensure that the input and output shafts have the same constant velocity. So on our angular velocity versus position graph, we could also add the output, and the output would share the same position as the input, like so. Constant velocity irrespective of angular position. So just to summarise what we've said there, the input and output shafts are both going to have constant velocity, even though their axes of rotation are different, providing their axes of rotation are parallel, and providing those two universal joints are arranged symmetrically, or in the same orientation as each other. Now, in the second part of this video, we're going to look at the formula that can be used in order to determine the fluctuations in angular velocity for our prop shaft. So let's clear some space and we'll take a look at that formula now. OK, so on the screen here we have the formula that can be used in order to determine the angular velocity of the prop shaft. And as we've already mentioned, that's going to change dependent on the angular position. So omega 1 is the angular velocity of our prop shaft, whereas omega is the constant angular velocity of our input shaft. Now we have two angles involved here. We have the articulation angle, which is the difference in angle between the axis of rotation of the input and the prop shaft. And we also have this angle beta here, where beta is the angular position. So we're just going to run through a couple of examples. And for each of these examples, the angular velocity of our input shaft is fixed as 15 rads per second. We know it's fixed because it has constant angular velocity. I've specified an articulation angle of 20 degrees, and we're going to run these calculations for angular positions of 0, 45, and 90 degrees. OK, so for these calculations, we need to make sure that our calculators are in degrees because both of our angles are expressed in degrees. And for the first calculation, we have omega 1, and we're doing this for an angle of 0 degrees we have 15 cos of the articulation angle, which is 20 degrees, divided by 1 minus sine squared beta sine squared theta. Now, for simplicity, I know that sine of 0 is 0. Therefore, I know sine of 0 squared is also 0. So the bottom of my fraction is just going to be 1. 1 minus 0 is 1. Therefore, the angular velocity is going to be 14.095 radians per second. Now I can repeat this. This time I have omega 1. I'm doing this for 45 degrees this time. So I'm going to have 15 cos of the articulation angle, divided by 1 minus sine squared beta sine squared theta. Now, sine squared beta is the same as sine beta squared. So we're going to have sine 45, like so, squared. And therefore, sine squared theta is the same as sine theta squared. So I'm going to write that as sine 20 
all squared like so. And all of that is on the bottom of the fraction. So we need to take a little bit of care when we input this into the calculator. Now running that through the calculator gives us 14.971 rads per second. And finally, we can repeat this, calculating the angular velocity of the prop shaft when the input shaft is at 90 degrees. And so this time we have 15 cos 20 over 1 minus sine of 90 all squared, sine of 20. It's still the articulation angle in that second bracket, like so, giving us an answer equal to 15.963. So what we've demonstrated here is that even though the input shaft is rotating at constant angular velocity, the angular velocity of our prop shaft fluctuates, but it fluctuates around that mean value of 15 rads per second. Now it is worth reminding you what we're calculating here is the angular velocity of the prop shaft, because the prop shaft drives the output shaft, and although the prop shaft's angular velocity is fluctuating up and down, the output shaft will be rotating at constant angular velocity, providing the axis of rotation of the input and output shaft to parallel, and providing the two universal joints are orientated in a symmetrical fashion.